Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here, and this is an unboxing and assembly of a vintage G.I. Joe vehicle. And this one is special. Usually I unbox and assemble common vehicles from the 1990s. This is the 1987 Cobra Wolf. This was sent to me by James Thompson with the express purpose of opening it and assembling it, so that's what I'm going to do. Thank you very much, James, for this. I hope you all enjoy it. I have the tools I will need to open and assemble this thing. Let's not delay, let's crack this thing open. This box is shrink-wrapped. Originally it wasn't shrink-wrapped. Somebody has done this aftermarket, probably just to make sure it doesn't get any further damage and to keep the thing together. So the first thing I will do is remove the shrink-wrap and I will try to do it without damaging the box. Uh, there are some holes in the shrink-wrap here and if I turn the blade away from the box, I think I can slice it open without scratching the box. The box already has a few scratches on this side so if i did end up scratching it oh there we go um i don't think it would be noticeable so uh, there we go shrink wrap oh, almost yeah so the uh, the the original tape on the box has been cut so um it has been opened before but i can see that the figure is still sealed um on the red card um, on the bubble. I can see that through the little window pane there. Uh, so there is a hope of having sealed contents in this thing. But let's let's check it out. Let's find out and set that aside. Uh, this actually both sides appear to already be open so I'm going to open this side so you can see from the camera's angle. And let's see what do we got? We've got a cardboard tray um actually it's not a tray it's just a, a no no yeah it's a it's a tray hold on and it's facing this direction so let me slide it out yeah we have sealed contents guys yep that everything yes oh yeah uh, uh this is a trip um i always enjoy assembling these gi joe vehicles but I don't do very many 80s vehicles because they tend to be more rare and expensive. Um, so this is a special treat. This is, I, uh, I, this is something I could have experienced as a kid in 1987 and I'm doing it now as an adult and that is exciting. Um, we have the blue clear plastic pieces for the canopy. Looks like we have a sealed bag with the uh, other parts uh, and there is the um, the sticker sheet and the sticker sheet sheet looks a little bit rough um, if this thing was stored in heat uh, it may have melted the glue a bit so uh, the the sticker sheet may be a bit iffy we'll check it out we will try it um, the body of the vehicle looks pristine it looks like it's never been touched uh, it's yeah, it looks exactly the way it, as it would have looked back in 1987. Uh, not a scratch on it, perfectly clean, beautiful. That's just, just beautiful. There's the, uh, there are the instructions um, and the blueprints. So we'll be following that to assemble this vehicle. Uh, so the paper has browned a little bit, uh, I guess just due to age. Uh, we have some catalogs. There's, um, I believe, yeah, this is the mail away catalog. Um, has some stuff that you could get through the mail in 87. And this is the 1987 um, uh, selection. It just shows you everything that was available on uh, that year at retail. And right there is our uh, Cobra Wolf. So groovy, very awesome. Uh, the other 1987 uh, vintage vehicle that I uh, unboxed and assembled was the Sea Ray, and there's the Sea Ray right there. All right, let's uh, let's carefully slide the figure out of the cardboard. Um, I want to try to do this gently, but 
doesn't seem to be a gentle way to do it. I'm just going to have to push them out. Uh, oh, come on now. Uh, is he taped on or glued on or something? He may be, because he's not coming. Uh, yeah, I think, I think he may be glued on. Uh, let's see here. Well, I don't want to. I want to cause as little damage to it as I can, but I can see there are some glue spots in there. Let me see if I can kind of just cut through the glue uh, without cutting my finger. Hopefully, uh, I want to cut through the glue and get this off, but I want to keep the cardboard intact. Um, the backing board for the figure because I'd like the figure to still be completely sealed when I open it. There we go. Yeah. And I, I don't remember these figures being glued on like that, but it's been quite a long time since I've opened one of these, so I, I wouldn't remember that. Yeah, a couple spots of glue on there. But there's the figure still sealed with his accessories. We will be opening that. And this is just the uh, cardboard insert. I will set that aside for now. Uh, and let's get to work on this guy. Let's look at the instructions and um, start putting it together. Okay, we need some parts for step one. Um, I'll try cutting this open real quick. And there we go. Um, parts, we need parts. Uh, some skis and some missiles and yeah that sticker sheet is sticking to the inside of the bag and yeah it's, I'm pulling it off I'm peeling it off but it's trying to take some of the stickers with it so uh, the stickers may be a project um, in fact yeah one just came off on my finger okay so I'm gonna leave the stickers there for now I don't want to lose any, um, but I'm going to get these other parts out. I will take those stickers, I'll, I will take that sheet off of the plastic, but it's stuck on there pretty good. I have seen that happen before uh, with other vehicles where the, you know, perhaps at some point in the last 30 years or so, uh, it was stored in a hot environment and um, the glue on the sticker sheet kind of melted and sort of uh, just stuck to, to everything. Um, that's okay though. That's it could still be salvageable, and we're gonna give it a try. But for now, um, I need these tracks. I need where are they? The wheels. There are the wheels. I need these wheels. Um, and oh, and these skis. And I have my nipplers to nipple these wheels off. Okay, there, there, and there. Got a clean nip on those wheels. And what it tells us to do is place these wheels um, on these tracks and the, um, the hollow side of the wheel should be facing in, so yes, just press those on, that was easy. Uh, these pegs for these wheels are often broken on the Cobra Wolf, so it's really nice to see some beautiful intact uh, pegs and those wheels fit on perfectly. So far everything has been very easy. Um, for the next part, I need to put these skis, let's see, this back post, yeah, the pa back post into the snaps underneath the front of the body it should just easily, hopefully easily, snap right on there. Don't give me enough trouble now. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. All right, so the front skis are on. These go 
on this underside and they fit on these bars here. These little clips fit on those bars. Um, I guess it doesn't matter. If they, okay, there isn't really a front and back. They are symmetrical. Uh, so what's really important, I guess, is having the hollow side of the wheel on the inside. So, let's see here. That should snap on, hopefully easily, right there. Well, maybe it's not going to be so easy, but we're going to get it. We're going to get it. Um, I just need to, that to wrap around that bar. You know who I feel sorry for? Dads in the 80s. A lot of dads in the 80s had to put these things together and had to deal with uh, these frustrations. Um, I remember, you know, I assembled a lot of G.I. Joe vehicles in my younger years, and I don't remember them being this difficult. I, I, I seem to remember getting them assembled, you know, in a few minutes and, and playing with the things. Uh, but now, as an adult, uh, it's a struggle. You know, there could be reasons for that. Maybe the plastic has deteriorated some since uh, since it was first manufactured. That's possible, but I don't think so on this. The plastic feels right. The plastic moves right. Uh, it's just given me a heck of a time. And I can't... My fingers are too big to like really get deep in there and press in uh, to make sure it goes on properly. So I'm, I'm hoping to this screwdriver will get some pressure right where it needs to go. Okay, there's one. And can I get that other one, please? There we go. All right, they are on and I didn't break anything. So those are the back treads with the wheels. Let's move on to step two. This came out of the box with the top and bottom pieces already snapped together, so I had to take them apart uh, in order to complete the next step, which is the um, missile launcher. And that goes in this slot right here in the bottom piece. I am doing it correctly, yes. Uh, goes there and there we go and this snaps on top of it there's got a couple of tabs here in the front and another in the back let's try to line that up really good it's a it's an odd shape it's an asymmetrical uh, shape and um, it's got a lot of quirks and personality to it, but um, but it's still really cool. That snapped in easily. Uh, back. Oh, I see. There. There. All right. Now, that is snapped together. There we go. Next, um, step three, we've got to do the canopy. That's this. Uh, let's cut that open. Uh, and this is pretty straightforward. Uh, we put the canopy pieces on. There is a front and a rear canopy, which is which? Uh, let's see. Well, it'll only fit one way, right? This has already come off, but I don't have to nipple the other one off. There we go. Okay. Uh, let's see. So this looks like the front one. Yeah, and this is the back one. Okay, no problem. So we just kind of, uh, yeah, snap the pegs into place and it should go in like that. It's, that was incredibly easy, almost too easy. So then that should close. Uh, now, come on, don't make a liar out of me. You're supposed to close easily and snap into place. Well, that, it is hinged properly. It is in the proper alignment, but that is 
carbon snap close. I don't want to break it. I'd rather leave the canopy open than break it. Let's go ahead and get this one on. See if we have any more luck with that. There. And yeah, they are both hinged properly. They are both connected properly, but both of them are struggling to close. Um, they should be flexible enough that these tabs should go right in the center there. There we go. Well, sort of. There. Back one's closed. Let's get this front one closed. We'll have to open them again, of course, because there are stickers that go in there. But I want the vehicle to work properly. That's, I think, more important than the sticker placement. That tab just seems to be a little too long and it does not want to go. So it looks like we've run into our next difficult piece. The canopy is on. It's on perfectly. It, it fits, it hinges, it opens exactly as it should. It just doesn't want to close. And I don't want to break it. That's as good as I'm going to get it. I'm not going to struggle with it anymore. I, might, I may play around with it later to see why why she's not closing, but I'm going to leave it there for now and move on to the next step. The next step being uh, this engine panel, which will go there, and uh, the gun uh, and mount. Uh, those are here. So let's, let's nipple these pieces off. That's the wrong tool. Here we go. There we go. Nipple, nipple, there. Oh, that didn't get a clean cut. There we go. And the cannon, nipple, nip, 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 nip. Nipple, there we go. All right, another plastic frame that we don't need right now. Okay, so now let's do the, let's do the engine panel first. That should be fairly easy. Um, it goes like that, and let's see, what's the best way? Oh man, I think from the bottom first is the best way. Put it in the bottom first and then push that tab in, maybe? Maybe not? Let's see. All right, another piece that just refuses to go easily. So maybe the top goes in first? Yeah, there we go. All right. Wasn't that bad. So there's that back panel there. Um, the cannon, we have this part that plugs into the this hole, the turret, and then we have the cannon which just clips on like that. And that goes like, I don't wanna put pressure on those wheels. So let's do it this way. Try to do it so you can see. Maybe. There. Oh, that was easy, except the gun came off. So come on now. Clip on and stay on. There we go. There we go. All right. Cannon assembled. Back engine panel assembled. What is the next step? We need the side skis. Let's get those. Uh, there. And then we'll need the ski pedos. These are our removable pieces, so now we're, we're putting the removable pieces on. These little skis that connect to the sides, they have foot pegs, so you can attach a figure to it. That's kind of cool. There. And these go here. Come on. Now, I know you fit. Look, I have one of these, right? I have a uh, Cobra Wolf. I have a couple of them, actually. So I know these pieces fit on. Um, so I should not struggle with these. And uh, yeah, that went easy. That was easy. That was easy. And also, you can uh, flip these treads up, which, man, that's really tight. Um, 
All right, well, you can flip these treads up and uh, ride on the skis, but that is so tight, I'm just going to leave them. How about that? That's a better idea. Just going to leave them. Uh, don't risk uh, breaking the silly thing. All right, the ski pedos. Let's clip these off. Since G.I. Joe vehicles didn't have a lot of paint on them, in fact, most of them had no paint on them, the way they had to uh, add color was to use different color plastic, you know, for different parts. Um, but to do that, you'd have to produce, you know, different color plastic frames for those parts. And uh, so they, they tried to be efficient with that and mold same color parts together as much as they could. Although on this vehicle, the cannon and the cannon mount are about the same color as the, um, the treads and the skis. Yeah, the same color, and yet they came on two separate plastic frames instead of one big one. Well, maybe they just didn't want to uh, have one big enough for all of them. So the ski pedos slide right back in there. Um, I, like I say, right back in there. Um, there we go. All right, they should wedge. Yeah, they wedge there. There you go. You got your ski pedos there, and this missile launcher should pop up because it is hinged there. And now we've got four red missiles. So you see you have red missiles to add a splash of color, but no paint, no paint on the vehicle at all. Um, and the stickers help as well. Sometimes stickers will add a little spot of color and that helps. Keep things from being monochrome. Uh, two, three, four. Come on now. Well, I, there is a mail-away version of the Cobra Wolf, and I still want to get it. It's mostly the same as this. In fact, it's almost exactly the same, uh, except for uh, the Ski Pedos and this missile launcher are in dark gray instead of this uh, off-white, this very light gray that's almost white. Um, it's not that significant a change, but... It, it's a, a variation that um, is kind of special, a little different, and I do want to get one. I've seen a couple floating around. Uh, I haven't pulled the trigger on them. I probably should have. Um, but I want to get one that it doesn't necessarily have to be complete, but I want all of the parts that are different from the uh, retail release, which means I want the different colored store. Uh, teep, uh, uh, I want the different colored ski pedos, and I want the different colored missile launcher. If it's missing the rest of the stuff, that's fine. I just want to make sure it has those parts. Um, so that is that, and I believe we are, yes, we are fully assembled. There is the fully assembled vehicle, but it is naked. We need to try to put the stickers on. Okay, here's what I had to do. I peeled the sticker sheet off of the inside of that poly bag, and I... Some of the stickers were stuck to the inside of the bag, so I had to peel those off and reassemble the sticker sheet. It is all here and all the stickers are accounted for, but they may not stick because um, the back of some of those stickers are dry and the front of the stickers are sticky. That doesn't help us very much. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna to try to encourage them to stick uh, with a little bit of rubber cement, just the tiniest spot of rubber cement on each one uh, as I stick it to the vehicle. Uh, I have the sticker sheet instructions here and we are just going to go for it. Uh, this will be a challenge, no doubt. Um, but I'm going to start in the front with number seven, which is the large Cobra emblem. This one is still stuck to the sticker sheet, so maybe it will stick on its own. Uh, let's see. There's a nice little space there for the sticker in the mold of the vehicle. That one's nice. Is that going to stick? Oh, no, it's not. Okay. 
All right, so let's just uh, very lightly dab it with rubber cement and encourage that guy to stick right there. There. Um, congratulations to everyone who is actually made it to this part of the video. I guess I'll... It doesn't say where this one goes. There's an extra number 13 sticker. Uh, it's on the diagram, but there's no arrow pointing to where it goes. Um, I don't know. Um, am I missing something? I don't think I am. I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna put it here because that's a good place for it. It looks like it could go there. One thing that has changed is um, in the past, the revenue I get from ads on this channel and from uh, Patreon that's just been money to buy toys and to cover equipment on the channel that I need for doing videos and it, it really has kept the channel alive because uh, I've been able to cover expenses that I would not otherwise be able to. Um, what's changed though is that that is going to uh, more and more be part of my regular income. Uh, that I will need to, uh, you know, actually pay my bills. And it's, it's been working, though. It's, uh, it's been enough, which is awesome. I may trim some of this video because not talking about anything particularly interesting and uh, putting on stickers that you can't really see until I get finished. So, yeah, uh, rather than show the entire sticker... Uh, process, especially since I have to do a little extra work on it. Probably what I'll do is skip to the end so you can see the stickers actually on the vehicle. So here are the stickers. Uh, they are all on and accounted for. Is it perfect? No, but I think that's what I like about it. I will need to remove some excess glue in spots. I will do that later. Uh, but right now I'm just happy to have the stickers on uh, and I want to move on to the action figure. Now we move on to the Ice Viper, still sealed in the plastic bubble. After the challenge of putting the vehicle together and putting the stickers on, I want to uh, practice extreme caution with this figure. Uh, I've been thinking about uh, the safest way to uh, open the figure so it will not possibly receive any damage. So uh, let's, um, there we go. That'll, that'll do. Get it. Ah, ah, there we go. There's the guy, fresh, fresh out of the bubble. Never before been touched by human hands. Uh, the O-ring is still pretty good. Some of the, some of these figures, even when they're fresh out of the package, uh, the O-rings can be a little weak just because of age. But this O-ring is good. There is his helmet. Ah, ooh, okay, the helmet doesn't want to stay on. But we're gonna make it stay on, there we go. Got his helmet, and uh, his little, um, his little ice picks here, the uh, ninja sai. Uh, oops, oops, oops. Yeah, don't, don't, no, you can't. Actually, let's put them in his hands. There, there are these little um, slots where you can place them on his leg, but why not? Let's put them in his hands. He feels like stabbing somebody today. Uh, there we go. So there we have it. A complete and assembled Cobra Wolf and a fresh out of the package Cobra Ice Viper. That was my unboxing and assembly of the 1987 Cobra Wolf uh, with the Ice Viper. Uh, thanks James Thompson for sending this. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, does this improve my estimation of the vehicle? Well, I already thought it was pretty good. And this one is now special because I got to put it together myself. So uh, that's all for now. I'll be back next week with a vintage G.I. Joe toy review. I hope you will join me then. I'm already working on it, and I think you will enjoy it. So thanks, James, and thanks all of you for watching, and I will see you next time.